Recording. Recording. All right, let's, let's do a, a pra- practice. All right. Buju, Knewia, Mami, Gwesi, and Dijin Kaz, Wabak, and Dudim, Wasle, Wadi, Bagujing, and Majig, and Ashwa, King, and Dun Jaba. Buju, James, and Dijin Kaz, King, and Dudim, Minneapolis, and Dun Jaba. Ashing knees in the sub and boobies. Mm-hmm. Oh, how are you, James? Ani nejia yain. In Mexico, Gindesh. Mino yeah. Mimi, I got a question. What's your role in clan? Yeah, me. I'm the uh, language coordinator, and I'm also the Ojibwe language instructor. What did you work before you working with clan? Before I was clan, I was actually a teacher. Uh, I was an elementary school teacher. I was a preschool teacher, and I was a high school teacher. Yeah, and I also did some subbing for colleges and universities as well. So yeah, I did all kinds of teaching for Ojibwe language and culture. How long have you worked with clan? And, um, I think I started back in 2014 or 2015. So back then, actually, it, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't called clan. It was called COG. COG is C-O-G. See, it stands for a Circle of Generations. And I was just a language consultant teaching language tables on Wednesday. But after COG, there was PCAP, Prevention Through Cultural Awareness Program. But yeah, after PCAP, that's when CLAN got started, Culture Language Arts Network. Then when CLAN started, I became full-time. That's when I became a language coordinator and language instructor. What is your favorite memory story while working with CLAN? And one of my favorite memories or stories was um, we went to the language symposium. It was back in November 2023. It was a MIAC language symposium. And uh, we were presenting on the language program. Everything we do for language here at the Minneapolis, Minneapolis American Indian Center. So, yeah, I presented for the language program. And, uh, yeah, Jonathan also went there and uh, Misco. And they also presented on the... Uh, drum and dances, family fun nights, and our podcasts and everything, everything, how we infuse language and all of that. But it was pretty awesome because when I was uh, presenting on the language prog- program, there was actually some interesting facts. We were showing the number of students that attended past classes for Ojibwe and Dakota. And um, as of right now, um, I'm pretty sure like I teach the world's largest language classes ever. And we are one of the most successful language programs out there. And, uh, but yeah, clans outreach for our classes. We actually have students that attend from all around the world. So this program, Cultural Language Arts Next Work, we actually pretty much got like a good grasp on the whole planet. So it's, it's really good that our, our, our program is uh, worldwide, the language classes, because everybody around the planet is starting to learn and understand what's going on with the Ojibwe and the core languages, the current state that, that they're in, and people can learn it and help revitalize language along with along with us. Oh yeah, so yeah, so anyways, that's what we were presenting on at the uh, Maya conference, and it was such an awesome uh, language symposium, and uh, I felt like we did such an awesome job. And I remember uh, when we were all done, we were outside taking group photos, and and what was so awesome was uh, when we were dic- taking group photos, they asked me like, hey, maybe we see, how about we hold you up and take a picture. You know, but instead of a picture, they're actually recording a video. I didn't know they were recording a video, and that rec- that video could actually be seen on our uh, Facebook page. So, yeah, so they all hoisted me up. They all picked me up. But it was funny because Jonathan was the first one to pick me up. And when I was bringing my arm back like this, I actually elbowed him in the face. So I was trying to pick my arm up around his, around, his, uh, around his neck, but elbowed him in the face by accident. So, to, so then we had to switch him and, uh, him and Sonny switch spots. So if you've seen the video, uh, Sonny's the main one holding me up. So yeah, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was good memories. One of the best memories I have working with Clan. What about you? Uh, work uh, being a student of uh, Clan Talk. What's one of your best memories being a student? Making a best friend named Ray. Yeah. Oh, making a best friend Ray. What mm-hmm. about the What about the videos? Any of those? Oh yeah, making videos with him is really good. He's a good actor, good language language speaker. A lot of good things about him. As me, the best director in the world. That's so called what I call myself. But yeah, make working with my friend Ray. What is your favorite part about working with the community? For me, favorite part of working with the community. Um, I probably say all the uh, programs that we have. Yeah, we have family fun nights, 
powwows, we have drum and dances, we have language classes. So yeah, let's talk about language classes. Language classes, when we first started classes were in person. It was nice teaching in person, meeting everybody. Um, Cause you get to see the reactions when you teach, you, you see if they get it or if they don't. So that was really nice and getting to know people. But then when the pandemic happened, that's when everything switched to online. And then when I'm online, I don't really get to see anybody. So it, it's a little bit more tough teaching online. You don't get too much uh, interaction. But this year, I'm actually hoping that classes go back to in-person again. So it'll be nice because we got the newly renovated Minneapolis American Indian Center. And it'd be awesome to get people inside here teaching, learning Ojibwe and learning Dakota classes. So yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, those are lounge classes. But then Family Fun Night... And because the pandemic happened, Family Fun Night was online via uh, Zoom. But now Family Fun Night is going to be in person. So yeah, so this uh, June 28th, this Friday, June 28th, 2024, we're having another Family Fun Night TP demo. So that'll be nice. The first Family Fun Night taking place here at the newly renovated Minneapolis American Indian Center. So I really love doing Family Fun Nights. It's really nice to see everybody how they're learning, how much they participate, how much they interact. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. And also our drum and dances. I like our drum and dances. Our drum and dances keep growing and growing, getting bigger and bigger. And we also live stream our drum and dances, which is also a lot of fun too. It's a lot of technical work, but yeah, I like it a lot as well. Not only that too, but we also do podcasts like this. This is a practice podcast. And you, you're a member of the community. So yeah, it's nice working with students. It's nice uh, having other people in the community to come in and... Uh, be interviewed on our podcast so yeah it's, it's really nice working with the community doing all kinds of stuff well actually uh, just one more thing i just want to say last summer 2023 drum and dance was actually in cedar field and that was a lot of fun but yeah but this summer's so rainy you know like i would like to go back to cedar field but is this so much rain happening we don't we don't even know if it's going to rain or not so yeah plus we got this new indian center so yeah we're just going to probably keep them all here at the indian center from now on yeah, it's kind of flooded around here somewhere. Like, we went to Treasure Island Friday, Saturday, I don't know. I don't know. But when we were driving there, there was, like, a big, massive lake. But that wasn't, like, a lake. It was just filled up with all that rain coming back and forth. Yeah, I know. It's pretty crazy. I heard, too, there's a there's a dam in Mankato that's oh, about yeah. to bust like, through. The, yeah. rap, the rapid then dam. I know. Pretty crazy, all this rain. What does working at... Mac mean to you? Our Minneapolis American Indian Center. Yeah. What does working at the Minneapolis American Indian Center mean for me? Um, it actually means a lot. Um, so how I got started working here, um, I actually had a dream. You know anybody who ever works with spirits? Yeah, yeah actually. Uh, well, well who, who do you know that works with spirits that has like an actual spirit helper that helps them out every day or from time to time? You know anybody? I think one of my native teachers from my like elementary school who used to do that. Okay. Yeah, uh, my mom and dad do that. And uh, my brothers, they have spirit helpers that help them out every day. But yeah, they, they do all kinds of stuff. They show us things here and there. They just uh, help us see things in the future, help help guide us where we want to go, what we want to do. Maybe we're unsure of something. But yeah, but every day we, we have to feast them uh do ceremonies for them, sing songs for them, you know, keep them keep them fed. And as long as we keep them fed, they always help us. So for me, I actually have spirit helpers that help me out. And one of my spirit helpers are actually the Mei Mei Wug. Do you know what that is, Mei Mei Wug? No. They're actually those little people. <laughs> so, yeah, little people, they could be like, I don't know, three feet tall. Sometimes people say when they see them, they look like little kids. <sighs> Excuse me. And some people, depending on where you are, some people say that Mamie Gwesi are, are little people like fairies. So depending on, like, from location to location, some people say they're fairies. Some people say they're little people that are like, uh, you know, like lawn gnomes or leprechauns. Yeah, some people say they're like that size, and some people say they're fairy size. So yeah, so those are my spirit helpers. So growing up, I always saw them my whole life. I always saw the little, the little ones that are like two or three feet tall, and I even saw those uh, fairy ones because I remember a couple of times when I was a little boy, I would hear like, a, I thought it was a dragonfly. It was in my bedroom. But then it was, it was one of those fairy people. Because I remember I saw it on my windowsill and it looked like a stick person. That's what it looked like to me. Because I remember you could see his eyes because I turned the light on. And when I turned the light on, his eyes were reflecting the light. Uh-oh. 
So yeah, I thought that was really crazy. I was, and it was, I was kind of like in disbelief. I couldn't believe what I was saying. So then, uh, but yeah, that's my name, Amy Guaysi. And those are my spirit helpers. They always help me. So one day, my spirit helpers gave me a, a, gave me a dream. They told me that I was going to work here at the Minneapolis American Indian Center. I mean, they didn't like come up to me and tell me. They, they, I saw it, like I saw myself teaching in the classroom and there was like white walls, but there were bricks. But yeah, one day me and my wife were on, uh, we were someplace far away in uh, Milwaukee, and I got a call to, to come sub at the Minneapolis American Indian Center for a language table. And then when I came here, that's exactly what I saw when I got here, how I envisioned it in my dream. So yeah, so uh, for me, working here, what does it mean for me to work here? I'm actually uh, doing what the spirits ask of me to do, so they... They want me here to, uh, to teach the language, to help revitalize the language, but not only the language, but the culture as well. So this is why I'm here helping teach language and the culture. So I teach a lot of students worldwide and a lot of youth, just like you. So yeah, so working here at the Minneapolis American Indian Center actually means a lot to me. What about you? Uh, what does it mean to be a student of Clan Talk? It's good and everything. I got to learn more about my language and everything, my culture. And you also got to learn another language, right? Yeah. Ojibwe? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I just want to say too on uh, languages. Did you know uh, with languages, you actually increase your uh, your brain capacity? Like, uh, for example, like, how am I trying to phrase this? Like, I'll give you an example. There's a school in Wisconsin called Waduka Dotting. They're an Ojibwe immersion school. So when that school first started, did you know that uh, they were unsure if they were going to make it all completely in Ojibwe? Some some people were kind of against it. Some people were for it. Because they were worried, like, hey, if my son or daughter learns Ojibwe, nothing but Ojibwe, like, what's going to happen with everything else and with English, like they're reading and writing English? I don't know, they were unsure about it, but they went ahead and did it. And then when they went ahead and did it, they did their, their state test, their standardized testing. And you know what happened when they did their standardized testing? Waduka Dotting, Waduka Dotting was number one in the state. And all they did was teach the kids Ojibwe. So this is what happens when, you're, when you learn another language. It actually creates a lot more neural connections in your brain. So if you know somebody who speaks more than one language, those people are really intelligent. They're really smart. So for all of you out there, if you know anybody who speaks more than la one language, they're actually pretty smart and intelligent people. So this is why it's really good to speak more than one language. So yeah, if you are a native and you only speak English, try and learn your people's language. It's going to increase your brain capacity, your uh, neural connections in your brain. It's going to just make you a lot more intelligent. Mamie, what does bringing back the language mean for you? It actually means a lot to me. Um, it actually really is uh, shameful, extremely terrible what happened to like our people, Dakota and Ojibwe people. Got our land taken away, language taken away, culture taken away. It's very devastating. But yeah, to, uh, to bring back the language, because everyone speaks English, and now we're at the beginning stages of revitalizing these languages. And right now, me teaching Ojibwe, it actually brings me a big sense of pride. It makes me happy to see... Uh, People speak in Ojibwe, even if it's just like small words, like they learn how to do a basic introduction, they learn their numbers, they learn a couple words, even if it's just small things like that, you know, it still makes me happy. But it really makes me happy when I see students go on and, and try to become fluent, you know, try to speak only Ojibwe. That's what really makes me happy. <clears throat> so yeah, bringing back, back the language gives me a lot of pride. So yeah, right now I'm the Ojibwe language teacher and I'm teaching Ojibwe, but I'm also the language coordinator so I'm helping, uh, helping by I'm helping the the code of language revitalization. So yeah, it means a lot to bring back the original languages from Turtle Island. Thanks y'all for watching this podcast with us, but me from Clan Talk, James, uh, May May from Clan. Gigwaman. Gigwaman. Alrighty, that's awesome. Want to push that red button? Thank you all for watching this podcast with us. Uh...
Thank you, everybody, for watching this podcast. This is James from Clan talking. May May from Clan. Oh, gigawatt man. Thank y'all for watching this video. <laughs>